In today's gospel reading, we are reminded that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And it's important that we realize this. So no one lights a lamb to put it under a bushel basket. And we are this lamp and we have been given this light by God, by the grace of God within us, by the very life of God within us. And it's only with the presence of God within us that we have the ability to forgive those who offend us in the proper way to, to the extent that we should, to, to be able to love the, the least of our, of our brethren. And we see this especially in the lives of the saints. So when God gives us the gift of faith, it's not just for ourselves, but it's for everyone around us. In other words, it's not enough for us to practice our faith on our own, to hide our faith, because then it's kind of like putting a lamp under a bushel basket. So in other words, God wants our faith to be manifest to everyone around us. And when we do this, when we, when all of us make the effort to do this, Christianity will spread. Now, this, this light or this, this emanation from us, it, it should be our, our goodness, yes. But it should be also the words that we speak and how we speak and ideally encouraging people to get them to consider the faith, to get them to the faith. Notice how our Lord also points out that if salt loses its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. And this is a kind of warning for us that we can become too complacent, too used to the things of our faith and not to appreciate things enough and then not to manifest our faith to others. In other words, as Catholics, we shouldn't just be pious when we come to church and then when we go out into the world, we're like everyone else. That, that's not what it means to be a Christian. So as a Christian, we ought to manifest our faith at all times. But what tends to happen is there's, a, there's a, this saying that familiarity breeds contempt. So in other words, when we become too familiar with something, we don't appreciate it as much as we should. This is why sometimes we take family members for granted. You know, if you, any of you have a pet dog, when you come home from your, your workplace, your pet dog is ecstatic to see you. It's jumping all over the place. Its tail is wagging. It wants to jump up and give you, give you a kiss. But our family members, it's kind of like they barely acknowledge the fact that you've arrived or your presence. In other words, we should be just as happy as, as, as a pet dog to see you again. But often we take each other for granted and it's not good. And the same applies to the mass, the celebration of the mass and to the Eucharist. So yes, I've kind of continued the theme of, of Corpus Christi this week. I've, I've left the, the um, fancy frontal out, the white frontal, even though we're in ordinary time. So I'm doing the votive mass today of the most precious blood of Jesus. So, I mean, think about it. Jesus shed his blood for you and for me. He died on the cross for us. And we tend to take that for granted and we shouldn't. So we need to be reminded of this. You know, someone loves us so much that they're not just shedding their blood for us, but enduring all kinds of sufferings for us and even giving their entire life for us, dying on the cross for us. So Jesus did all these things for us and we should never take it for granted. You know, there's a saying that some of the best Catholics are recent converts. In other words, most of us are cradle Catholics. We've been Catholics since we've been baptized as, as infants and we grew up in the Catholic church. And the tendency with cradle Catholics is to take their faith for granted. Whereas recent converts, adult converts to the faith, for them, the faith is new. The faith is exhilarating. The faith is exciting. They want to share the faith with those around them. They know they need to kind of um, make more of an effort to become truly the way that Christians are called to be. And this is the ideal for all of us. The problem with many of us is that we think we're okay where we are. We think it's okay just to, to be pious in, in our own homes or when we come to church, but not in our interactions on a day-to-day -day basis with the people around us. 
And our Lord is saying, this is not good because if we are like salt that has lost its flavor, then we're useless. We're good for nothing except to be thrown and, and trampled underfoot. So he's saying this is potentially what could happen to us if we lose that zeal for our faith, if we lose that excitement for our faith. So it's a good reminder to us. And it's a, it's a reminder to us to do what we can to become better Christians, to be more of a good example, a light to, do, to those around us. And ideally, to try to spread the faith to everyone in, in society. Um, as you know, yesterday there was an, an announcement regarding the um, lifting of, of some of the lockdown measures. And so the Catholic churches uh, or religious uh, churches will be enabled to be open for public service. So we will be permitted to have public mass starting on Friday. And Friday is the feast of the most sacred heart of Jesus. As you know, we don't have to pre-register for weekday masses, but it is possible that because it's the feast of the sacred heart that, um, you know, we may reach our full capacity. So we're only allowed to have 15% at this stage. So that's uh, 75 people in, in the church. So keep that in mind. So we're going to go back to our regular schedule. So Friday, 9.30 a.m. Mass in, in the morning and in the evening, 7.30 p.m. Mass. And yes, we will have adoration in the morning after Mass until 12.30 and in the evening from 6 p.m. till roughly around 7.30 when the evening Mass will start. For Sunday Masses, yes, you do need, do need to pre-register. Normally, the pre-registration would take place Tuesday mornings, but because people aren't aware of this news or it's just so recent, we thought that just for this week, we would have the registration starting tomorrow, Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. And then next week, we'll go back to uh, the regular schedule of starting the pre-registrations Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. So this week, the registration for Sunday Mass will be Wednesday morning. So we can give thanks to God that finally we're enabled to have um, public Masses and hopefully Things will continue to get better. And when we go to the next stage, they said we can have 25% capacity uh, in the churches. So hopefully we'll get to that stage soon. Okay.